Welcome to Aqua. In this movie, we demonstrate the window and shading modeling capabilities of IDA eyes. Windows can be included in a model in different ways. Here, we open a surface and include the window through a simple drag and drop system. This is how we change the dimensions of the window. This one is 1 meter wide and 1 meter tall. The location of the window can be changed by defining appropriate coordinates or by moving it with a mouse. Let's have a look at the window properties the user can specify. At the top of the input form, the user specifies the glazing. Ida Eyes contains a database for the user to select from. Of course, it is also possible to define your own glazing type and save it to the database. Associated with the glazing are G, Tau and Tauvis values as well as the U-value and emissivities. Below in the form, the user has the option to define window openings for ventilation purposes. There are three predefined control options. The top one opens the window as defined in a schedule. The two below are more refined. And in addition to the schedule, they take the set point for cooling, as well as room and ambient temperature into account. Here we see the schedule itself. The window can open it between 6 in the morning and 6 in the evening. Next we specify the integrated window shading. This could be an internal or external blind, a curtain or a roller blind. Associated with an integrated shading are multipliers for G, Tau and U value. It is also possible to define a diffusion factor for solar radiation. For the integrated window shading, different predefined control strategies are available and through a schedule it is again possible to define a usage time. Next are the external window shadings. This could be a marquise, an overhang or side fins on the side of the window. We select a drop-on awing. Here we see the geometry data that can be specified and the material properties. It is also possible to define a transparency value for the material. And again, there is a control associated with the external window shading. At the bottom of the form, the user specifies the frame ratio of the window and the thermal properties of the frame. Here we see the window in 3D. As a next step, we convert this window to a resource. This enables us to reuse this object we have defined elsewhere in the model. We change to the floor plan tab, select the resource we've just specified and now we include multiple windows by just clicking onto the floor plan of the model. You can see that this goes very fast and very efficient. Another way to include windows is to define a window grid for a facade. This is an option we do not show in this video. Here we see the updated model in 3D. Now we want to introduce you to our detailed window model. We drop it into the surface and once more adjust the dimensions. Initially this window model looks quite similar to the basic window model we've seen previously. At the top of the window form the user specifies again the glazing. When we however open up the properties of this glazing, we can see that the model contains each glass layer and gap layer between the glass sheets. Transmission, reflection and absorption are then dynamically calculated with each simulation time step. Data such as the G or Tau value are still provided for reference conditions but not applied during the simulation. For the detailed window model, the user can again define an integrated window shading. However, the treatment of the shading in the model is a lot more detailed. The spacing and width of the slots is defined and also the slot angle. The latter can also get controlled and altered over time. Therefore, rather than defined fixed multipliers for G or Tau values, the dynamic nature of the shading is accounted for during the calculation. And this also includes the properties of the slot material. 
Below is the external window shading, and that is similar to the basic window model. We however don't want to use an external window shading in this model, so we take it out again. Below that you specify window ventilation, again similar to the basic window model. What we would like to point out to you here though, is the option to define your own control strategies. For both window models, we have shown you different pre-specified controls. For all cases, you can however also specify your own controls. For instance, if you want to open the window once certain CO2 levels are reached, or if you want to close the window at certain wind velocities, you can define this through your own control macro. Ida Ice is generally incredibly strong when it comes to control modeling. We will cover this in another video. Lastly, we want to show you the possibility to model glass panes that serve as acoustic protection or double skin facades. Let's look at the properties we can specify here. Basically, Ida Eyes introduces a second detailed window model with the space in between being ventilated. Here we choose a composition with an internal blind for the outer layer. The shading element is then also displayed in the cross section we see on the right hand side. In this cross section we also specify air inlets and outlets or mechanical extract from the space in case this has been included in the design. We also define the width of the space. All the data definition associated with the shading happens in the same manner as we've already seen it for the detailed window model. Let's have a look how the two window configurations defined for the western facade compare. To do this we perform a simulation. We define a simulation period from the 1st of June to the 31st of August. There is bedroom 1 on the left hand side and bedroom 3 on the right hand side. Here we see the detailed heat balance for both zones. By double clicking onto the legend we can extract certain data entities, in our case the heat from solar. On the left hand side we see the room with the double skin facade. We see that the solar radiation levels are a lot lower than in the other room with a drop arm awing. With these result graphs that are automatically generated by Ida Ice, it is also possible to change the display period. So let's look at the results for particular days. In the graph on the left hand side, we can see how solar gains change rapidly when the blinds are opened or closed. We can also interrogate the time and value of peak solar radiation and we can step between different days. In addition to the output in graphical form, simulation results can also be visualized in 3D. Here we see for example the airflow in the model. On the left we can see a continuous airflow in and out of the double skin facade. But that the airflow into the building itself varies with the windows opening and closing. There are also changes in airflow through the window on the right hand side. Finally we want to talk about side shading. When performing a window simulation, the shading from the surrounding can be very important. However, in many thermal calculations this issue is not considered at all or through approaches such as the adaptation of the horizon line, which is both cumbersome and inaccurate. In Ida Eyes, the user defines the obstructions themselves and the software then automatically calculates the effect on the building. The obstruction definition can happen in different ways, for instance by importing 3D SketchUp objects or by defining basic horizontal or vertical obstructions. Here we apply the latter approach. In the 3D view we can now see how the obstruction shades the building, an effect that is fully accounted for in the simulation. Thanks for watching this video.